Bonjour, and thank you for joining us. My name is Lucy Sacco, and this is Master Artist Class, a program designed to introduce master artists from the late 19th and early 20th centuries by offering a brief lecture on the artist's lives and their painting styles, a segment with images of each master artist's works, and lastly, we will paint our own rendition of one of the featured artist's paintings. In today's episode, we will be introducing the American Luminous, a Hudson River School affiliate, Martin Johnson Heed, who was born on August 11, 1819 in the town of Lumberville, Pennsylvania. His family owned the general store and post office in the town where he grew up. He is widely known for his paintings of East Coast salt marshes, seascapes, depictions of tropical scenery, hummingbirds, and still life paintings of flowers such as magnolias, apple blossoms, and orange blossoms. Early in life, he studied with Edward Hicks, a well-known American folk artist and distinguished religious minister. As a young man, he traveled to Rome, Italy, where he studied for two years. After returning from a second trip to Europe, he settled in New York City finding residence in a building that housed a number of Hudson River School artists such as Albert Bearstadt, Sanford Gifford, and Frederick Edwin Church, becoming particularly close friends with Frederick Church. He traveled to Brazil in 1863 where he painted a series of small hummingbird paintings intending for a book but the book was never published because of his concerns of reproduction and financial limitations. He later traveled to Nicaragua, Colombia, Panama, and Jamaica, painting subjects of tropical birds and lush foliage. During his career, he painted several East Coast salt marshes and coastal scenes, focusing primarily on the lighting and subdued flat scenery occasionally including haystacks or small figures. This led many historians to characterize him as a luminous rather than a Hudson River School artist. Today, we will be painting one of Heed's coastal scenes called Be Calm, Long Island Sound, painted in 1876. Heed married late in life at the age of 64 and settled in St. August, Florida where he painted primarily floral still life paintings until his death on September 4, 1904. Please view the upcoming segment filled with the magical and moving images of the American luminous master artist Martin Johnson Heed. Enjoy. <music>
So today we're going to be painting Be Calmed, Long Island Sound by Martin Johnson Heed. It's one of his uh, subdued, uh, luminous paintings. You're going to learn how to paint misty skies and reflections in water. It's a very peaceful painting. Um, if you'd like a rendering or a list of supplies, <laughs> you can go to my website, masterartistclass.com, and there will be those things for you. I now have a book with um, 12 renderings and copies of the renderings of the paintings that I'll be um, doing. And you'll be able to get the whole book for a fraction of the cost uh, that if you would buy several renderings. Um, anyway, I'm very excited to do this painting with you all. So let's get to work. I'm going to start with my three-quarter inch flathead brush. And many of these colors, I have about 10 or 11 colors on my palette. Many of these colors are like part of one specific color. In other words, I have a deep maroon color. Then I added a little bit of um, white to it or warm gray to it because this is sort of a grayish painting. I used like a warm gray and um, then I added a little bit of blue to some of it. And so I took it, made it lighter with the warm gray, and then I made it darker with, by adding a little bit of blue, uh, cobalt blue. And then for the clouds, I have warm gray with a little uh, deep yellow, cadmium yellow move mixed in there. And that has also lighter colors, a little bit more white, a little bit more yellow, a little bit more white. And those recipes will be on my website for you. Um, so I think we're going to start with the sky. The sky is pretty covered up with mist. But I'm going to start with the sky. I'm going to put a much brighter blue than you see here on the copy. I'm going to go all the way down to the middle here. Even though you'll see clouds, um, you're going to be covering this blue up for the most part. And I'm going to put a fairly thin coat of paint in this painting, you're going to use a little bit more water than we have in past paintings. And that is because as a luminous, the light, the lighting in this painting is very, very subtle. And yet, that's what the painting is about. It's all about the lighting. And uh, at least when you're painting it. So you want to be sure to make sure you have a thin coat on the bottom, nothing thick. You don't want it to take a long time to dry. So that's what we've got so far. And we're just putting that blue in the sky. This blue is a mixture of cerulean blue, cobalt, and a very little bit of white, or um, I think I used unbleached titanium. So it's a little bit more gray than we're used to. OK, so that's good. The next color 
is going to be, I'm going to use my tapered brush. I'm going to actually take that deep burgundy that I was telling you about. It's a uh, burnt sienna and raw, uh, and uh, no, burnt sienna and a little bit of, or quite a lot of uh, red violet. So I'm going right along the horizon line with that. I'm going to keep going straight across the horizon line. And this tapered brush allows you to make a very fine line. And it's going to be very visible. We want that to show up. And that's it for that color for now. Later on, we might use a little bit to mix in with the other colors. Now I'm going to take my flathead brush again, and I'm going to put the, there's a little bit of a lighter burgundy here that I've mixed up. I've put a little white in with the red violet and the burnt sienna. So I'm just going to put that down. I'm going to go right over the clouds. Or right over the clouds, you're going to go right over that. And again, it's fine. Try to make a full brush stroke so that you don't leave a lot of uh, marks that stop. And, I mean, if you want to use a smaller brush when you get closer to the boats, uh, you can do that. Don't paint your sails, please. If you paint your sails, you might lose it because you won't get them to be white again. And there is zero white in this painting, so... The fact that they're light is going to be an opportunity to put a very thin coat of color over them. So, this painting, it looks very simple, but like most of the paintings that we're doing, they're master artist paintings. And uh, I'm trying to do them probably much better than I would probably focus on in private. So just do the best you can. And I guarantee you it's going to come out perfect. You will love it. So not only will I put that color up above, I'm going all the way down here. I'm going to go all the way to the bottom here. It's okay if you paint over the reflections in the water because we can still see them. You're putting a very thin coat. Okay, You want to see the rendering underneath your paint here. I think it's really something special that Martin Johnson Heed, he, he knew these very skilled landscape artists, the Hudson River School artists, but he went his own way. And um, I mean, these Hudson River School artists are amazing. We're going to be studying uh, a few of them in the future. But he liked a more subdued sort of um, subject. And it was all about light. Now, luminism is really about um, it's about the majesty 
of nature. And so when you create this luminism, this luminous effect, this uh, lighting, it kind of brings a spiritual aspect to the painting. So that's, that's a really special thing. And the, Amer the Hudson River School artists, that's also what they did. They kind of focused on, um, I now have the, the uh, deep maroon and the, a little bit of white that made it a lighter color and a little bit of cobalt in this. So it's a deeper color uh, than the uh, middle color. It's a little bit deeper. So you're going to see here, it's kind of dusty looking. So we're going to go over that, we're putting that layer down. Now this is a little bit different because it is very sort of uh, misty. So it kind of goes up into the sky a little bit. We don't want any lines here. All this is going to get covered up though with mist, with the clouds that we're going to paint. I'm going, to go, I'm going to go right in between the sails on this boat. And the way I'm going to do it is with my tapered brush. Uh, if you want, you can use a smaller brush. The tapered brush, to me, allows me to be very precise. Um, I like it, <laughs> as you know. I'm getting a little bit more water here. Okay, I'm just kind of running out of paint. I'm going to keep going up until I run out of paint. Then I'm going to start swirling it around here. I'm just rubbing it into the paper. You don't want to put so much water that your paper starts to disintegrate. So be gentle with your uh, paper. Now there's a little bit of that deeper color around the edges here. We're going to go wherever you see the deep gray, that's where you're going to put that, uh, that darker light color, I guess what it is. It's not the burgundy, but it's a little bit darker than the rose color. There's three maroon colors, really. And there's probably going to be a fourth, which is very, very pale. I'm going to mix a little bit of uh, warm gray into it, and that'll be making it a, you know, I don't really want to fill in that whole reflection, but if I do, it's OK. It's really all right. Now this painting is going to be gorgeous to hang in your home. People are going to be wondering, who painted that? And it's going to be you. But you can say, it's my rendition of Martin Johnson. He's Be Calmed. So, you know, it's okay to go over the reflections, but um, I would recommend that you just kind of graze over it. All right. So, 
really trying to get all that color out of the brush. So I can use my next brush. So now that I have that sort of finished, it's not all finished, but um, it's pretty finished, pretty much. Um, now I'm going to start doing the clouds. And the clouds are sort of tricky. Okay. So you are going to take your uh, quarter inch flathead brush, not that color. These clouds are really, they're not white. They're like a grayish yellow color. And there's lots of layers here, so this is how it's going to go. You're going to go go right up into the sky. It's okay to cover the whole sky with it. It's very misty, misty there. That's what clouds are, after all. <laughs> I remember as a girl, I used to think that I could just go up and sit on the clouds. <laughs> I wished so bad that I could. And then I had an aunt tell me that, no, we can't sit on the clouds. They're only made of fog. And oh, was I ever de devastated. <laughs> I was going to take an airplane up there and step out onto a cloud. <laughs> I wonder how many of you thought that way. Kind of like leaving in Santa Claus or something. But, um, As you can see, I'm kind of eliminating. There's a line where the blue starts and the pink sort of begins, the burgundy sort of begins. And eventually, you won't see any kind of line because there's going to be uh, at least three layers of clouds here. So go ahead all the way up to the top with your color here. It's okay if some of the parts aren't covered. You want a little bit of that blue poking through. You know, just like if it was a foggy day. It helps to have a little water on your brush. The water is, I've said it before, is the vehicle for your paint. And it helps it to move around on the canvas or your paper. But you don't want to go overboard with paper. When you have paper, you can sort of, uh, you know, ruin the paper. But, uh, you know, that's okay with this. You're not going to ruin this paper. This is very high quality, heavy grade paper. So you can see the mist is starting to appear there. Now I'm going to use another color that's still kind of like a warm gray. Now I'm going to start putting in some clouds. And I'm only going to do half of the clouds, half of the sky with clouds first because uh, I want to make sure that it's the right consistency when it dries. It's going to dry a little bit here. It's going to dry. 
and it doesn't have to be exactly like the clouds that you see in the copy. I know mine aren't going to be. <laughs> I mean, I always, it's our rendition, right? It's our own rendition. So I'm just showing you how he might have gone about it, painting it. But the fact of the matter is, is that I'm using a acrylic paint, and he was using a oil paint. So there is a big difference there. And I'm sure he was using some sort of a, a fanned brush, which you could do too. That's a good brush for blending. Okay. I'm taking all the paint off of my brush. And maybe I'll use a bigger brush. Maybe I'll use my three-quarter inch flathead brush. Now I'm going to start swirling it. I'm kind of rubbing it. I'm blending it in. Only in certain parts, though. Only in certain parts. Some of it is going to be just left alone. I'm going to leave some of it alone so I've got some clouds poking out. And it's okay if you rubbed out something that you didn't really want to. It's okay uh, because you can always paint something back. You could put a, another layer in there. We want it to be soft. We don't want to see where the mist begins and where it ends. We want to see, unless we've got a cloud there. And then we want to kind of see where that, you know, distinction is. So as you can see, it's getting very, you know, there's some sort of a cloud forming there. I'm going to back up. I like to do that a little bit. Okay, so that half is sort of finished. Now this other half, it's a little more tricky. And uh, there are some real significant parts of this painting. It seems as though there may be a sun or some kind of light poking through. To me, this looks like a morning scene. And... Uh, we are going to create this very luminous, sort of magical cloudiness. Okay, so. You can see I'm just randomly putting blobs of paint down and kind of blending it out. I want some real thick parts of this painting to be there. And eventually I will go back in and I'll blend it out again. So the reflection down here, if you haven't covered it up, there is a round roundish part here, and that's where the sun is. We're going to go back in and put a brighter, a lighter color there. And don't go dot, dot, dot with your clouds, okay? Be careful that your, car, your clouds are really random. It's almost like your hand has a little bit of a tremor to it. And like, I don't like saying that, but it, that's exactly what I'm doing, is I'm just shaking my hand a little bit to, you know, get random 
parts to this application of the paint. Okay, so now I've got to go back in and swirl it out. I'm going to swirl it out. I don't know if you noticed, but I have a new palette. And it's very sloppy. But um, anyway, I'm going to do this. So I've got a little water on my brush. And I'm just kind of blending it out. We're going to go down into the maroon, this horizon. And you know, don't get carried away with blending it out. Yeah, you want it to be misty, and you kind of don't want your, uh, you kind of don't know, want to know where things begin and end. As you can see, it's getting sort of cool here. It's getting cool. It's getting really uh, sort of misty. You want it to be very trans translucent, so to speak, in some spots. You want to see the dark, the blue sky, but then you also want to see uh, the clouds. So let's see. So very lightly, I'm going to move because this cloud looks like it's kind of moving out into the atmosphere. And if you leave the top part of your clouds, I think you'll be successful in making it look like it's very misty, but has some clouds in there. I'm just looking at the copy, by the way. Now, at this point, I am totally just looking at the copy. Step back. Yeah, these clouds look like they're kind of going and getting blown a little bit. I don't really want that look. I think I'm going to add a little bit of white, titanium white, to the area here. But there's not much. It's not like a big white circle there. There's just, it's just slightly lighter than the rest. And I'm going to take and kind of phase it out. We want it to be a little bit brilliant here where the sun is. And this painting really picks up where all of the light hits. 
All right. Got to be careful. It's not everywhere. Just in a couple of spots. That looks a lot more um, yellow than I've got here. So I'm going to go back in. I'm going to take some of my burgundy and my um, premixed sort of raw sienna color. It's a little bit of sort of like a raw sienna with a um, little bit of white or yellow in it. See how this is kind of blending together here, getting a little bit darker toward the edge of the painting. It's a little dramatic. You want it to be a little bit dramatic. And I mean, how the masters did it, they just went back and forth. You have to go back and forth. You go back and forth. It's not all, oh, we're going to just paint this, blue on top, purple in the middle. <laughs> it's a lot of layers. This is how the masters do it. But of course, they had oil paint that stays wet longer, and it's just... I think sometimes easier to move things around after they dry a very little bit. So, kind of grazing over some of this sky over here with my raw sienna type color. It's just a warm, it gives it a warm feel. I put a little bit of uh, the, the darker burgundy color and the raw sienna color together. Oops. And it's okay if you kind of have something like that happen. You can just wipe it off or wash it off, whatever you like. I think that's a little bit much. And you just go back and forth until you feel happy with it. Back and forth. There's a little bit of pink hue up toward the top, a little bit of a pink mist. Everything sort of it, it all blends together, and it's okay. It's going to be a magnificent painting. Whatever you do, believe me, you're going to have a beautiful painting. I promise you that. Whatever you do, it's going to be absolutely perfect, perfectly your own, from your hand. I have a painting at home above my couch. Uh, it's a very large. And uh, I painted one of Frederick Church's paintings on it. Um, I, I got the canvas from uh, Home Goods. It was an abstract painting. And I did a painting right over the top of it. And it was one of Frederick Church's paintings, one of the ones at the museum. And. Uh, I loved it so much, I had to have it in my own home. And you'll be able to do similar things when you learn the tricks of these painting classes. If you practice and you take these painting classes that I'm teaching everyone, 
Um, I promise you, you're going to have some real skills. You just have to pay attention and, you know, go easy on yourself, too. Nobody learns overnight. But I have taught these classes to people who have never, ever held a paintbrush in their hand. And it's all a matter of just being able to listen and follow instructions, <laughs> that sort of thing. But the renderings really do help. OK, so now we're going to get into more clouds, more mist. I'm going back and forth. You can see I am. So here we go. can't see where one starts and the other begins. That's my goal, is to not have a line at all. Just really misty. I think you'll be able to do this painting really well. Back again. And back up again here. Okay, so. Going back in with a little of this deeper color. I think I'm going to add a little bit of blue to it. Make it really dark. Because it is. It's very dark. This horizon is so, it's so interesting, so subtle. Okay, so I'm going to go down into the water. I'm going to let that set. and let that all dry up there a little bit. Kept going into it too much. Sometimes you've got to know when to walk away from something. Sometimes you have to know when to leave it alone. And if you feel like you're fighting with a painting or something, you should just drop it for a minute. Just drop it, walk away, you'll be able to fix it. Uh, it'll come back to you. Okay, so now I'm going to do the reflection of the sun here in the water. And this, there is zero white in this painting, really and truly. I'm going to go over that sun a little bit more. But this reflection here is absolutely not white. It is sort of a raw sienna, a little bit like raw sienna. I'm using my three-quarter inch flathead brush. It's getting a little blown out here. I'm going to put some warm gray in it and make it a little bit lighter. And then I'm going to go back across, only, in, only underneath where the sun is. And you'll notice there's a little sailboat back there, too. Now there's a little reflection here on a, little, on a wave. There's a little wave here. So it's a little bit more 
pinky, then the raw sienna, then the warm side over there. It's a little more pinky. But there are some reflections over here, too. So I'll go over here. I want all the paint out of this brush. It's getting sort of beat up. I've got another one. That's better. That's much better. So now we're going to put some of the details in this painting. I'm going to do the little sailboat in the distance, which is right here. And it's very small. I'm just going to do a little dab there. You can barely see it. There's a little bit of a reflection in the water there. I think I'm going to go over this horizon line again just to crisp it up. Now I'm going to add a little bit more light to the reflection. I'm going to take my raw sienna sort of mixture here and go here. Something a little more subdued. I think you're going to love this painting when you're done with it. Pay attention to the colors. Like you've got to really look at the colors. And that will help you to do it to your satisfactory expectation. A little bit of light over here. Just a little bit. I'm really going to put these clouds in now. You've already put several layers, so it'll be easy to blend them out. And of course, the sun will be easier to blend out. Getting, coming down to the home stretch. Yeah, that's looking real good. Okay, so I have a deeper color here. I have a pain gray. And I use pain gray instead of black. I like to use a pain gray. Um, 
it's more subtle than black. And I don't think he used black in this painting at all. I think he just blended a lot of colors together. So I'm going to go ahead and put these waves in here. I'm going to put the dark part of the waves, and I'm just following the rendering. I'm just putting, you know, whatever's here, I'm copying it. But I'm using a deep pain gray because the shadow of the wave is uh, the key to making it look like a wave, actually. And there's quite a few dark shadows in this part of the water. It's going to really create some drama for you. And then over here, there's another wave coming in. And the sailboat, I'm going to do that, the pain gray color, even though it's a little dark, but I'm still going to do that. Now the sails, you're probably thinking, oh, the sails are white, and they are not. They are <laughs> rather a deep color, actually. They're a little bit of raw sienna and warm gray. So start out lighter rather than darker. And be careful that you don't make them too dark. But they're really not that white. So it's kind of like a peachy, they're kind of like a peachy color. And then, of course, you've got to do the reflection in the water, which is similar, similar color. We're almost done. So just go ahead, just delicately, very lightly, do not press on your brush. You can make it a little bit lighter than that. That's not quite light enough. There's a couple of parts where there's a wave rippling in. And in those instances, there's going to be a break in the reflection. You're not going to paint a line straight down like that. You're going to paint horizontal lines. So, And leave a little space here and there to show where the waves are. Yeah. We're getting there. Almost done. We have a couple of things to do with the wave, and then we're going to be finished. So I'm going to take the middle color of the burgundies and mix a little bit of warm gray in it. And I'm going to do the top of the wave which are over here. And it's very subtle, very subdued. But this is what I believe he did. And then you've got a little bit of a wave here. And over here, that's a little bit lighter.
You will see where these go. These little ripples. What's nice is he kind of went back in and made all of these little reflections in the water. So, I feel like we're finished. Um, this was a really fun painting. And that's good. We're done. I want to thank you for joining me today. If you need a rendering or any, the list of supplies or anything like that, you can go to my website, masterartistclass.com, and those things will be there for you. I had a great I hope you did. Have a good day and so long.